Hello and welcome to another episode of Over the Counter Conversations. Today I am joined by Raphael David, uh, the creator of Connecting Flights. How are we doing, Raphael? Very good, thank you. Obviously, we'd really like to support um, people who are kickstarting their games and game designers and things, and even more so when they they are local. Um, so, Raphael, you, you're based in the Glasgow area, right? Yeah, I'm um, from East Kilbride, yeah. And do you want to tell us a little bit about your game, Connecting Flights? Sure. So, Connecting Flights is a game for one to five players, and it's really an engine builder, uh, medium weight, um, with auctions and network building, and you basically play as an airline manager trying to make the most profitable airline. Yeah, like that was the that was the thing when I first saw it as well. It's a uh, it's very very like classic Euro game, right? It's... Yeah, to some degree, yes. But I think it's above average in terms of player interaction. And unlike most Euro games, there is also a take that element, and that's kind of optional. So. I put in these sabotages in the game, kind of partly exp- um, um, inspired by the kind of early airline tycoon games. Mm. Um, but actually, so yeah, there is a take that element, and players can just like decide not to do the take that element. Uh, but if it's some of them are kind of fun, so that's why I decided to put them in. And you know, when when you're playing with your maybe family or not necessarily board gamers. Sometimes it can just be that the take that element is is kind of preferred by those, uh, by by those crowds. Yeah, so that that's interesting actually that you you mentioned airline tycoon. Um, so what 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 is your background in gaming? Are you a big like, PC gamer or do you have like deep roots into board gaming? Like what 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 is your background? A bit of both. Like um, uh, from early early ages, I I played board games with my my parents. Uh, it, it, it was kind of just uh, the, whatever was on the market at the time, so it was uh, not that much. Uh, <laughs> but over over time, I kind of transi- transitioned into uh, video games and then back into board games as the kind of market picked up. And, you mm. know, we every year since for the last 20 years, we've been getting more and more different exciting games. So that's kind of for the last 10 years, I've really it's kind of coming back into board games. Yeah, so that, that's interesting because obviously in the, the UK we've seen a big resurgence in board gaming in the last ten to fifteen years. Um, was was that any different growing up in in Poland? Because I know like Germany has really really ingrained like board gaming as like the family board game night, board game culture like that runs really deep in like Germany. But is that the same in Poland? Like, is is board gaming been a big thing in Poland your whole life? Or no, I think it Poland was kind of lagging behind a bit a few years. So even maybe like 15, 20 years ago, Monopoly was like your go-to board game. And I mean, it's, it's really, st- it still is, yeah. right? That's that's the yeah. thing. I was I was talking with my my sister, my sister's fiance really really likes board games, um, and we were saying, oh, now that now that lockdown has freed up, uh, let's play some board games. And my sister was like, Monopoly, and the two of us were like, no, not that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so sorry. What you were saying? Like, what 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 sort of board games did you did you grow up on then? If there wasn't that board game culture in Poland. Um, so, like I said, Monopoly. My dad also liked uh, war games, uh, so I played a couple of those. But those were never fun because I always lost. <laughs> Same with chess. Like I was playing my my parents and my grandpas with chess, and I, I always lost with them. So that was no fun. Yeah, like that, that. That's the thing, especially with a game like chess, because there's there's no there's no variance, right? So it's yeah. the the best player wins every time. Um, yeah. Which, which is what I like. I like my my favorite types of board games are like the the abstract ones, the ones that that aren't particularly themed around anything. They're just mm-hmm. yeah, like like chess, but they they add in the, the Euro gaming elements. They add in like the randomness and the variance and catch up and um, yeah. kind of kind of improving on the formula. Um, so that's really interesting, and then like the, so were you a big fan of all these tycoon games, like the real tycoons and the the airway the airway tycoons, like, and that's what's brought you here, or what what was your that's, video gaming career like? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what brought me here. Um, also, games like Civilization. Um, mm. So it definitely games where you kind of build up something from scratch, uh, and that's kind of yeah the inspiration for the the board, my board game as well. Yeah. So, is is this the first board game you've designed, or have you done anything else like this? Yeah, that's pretty much the the first series one. Obviously, as a kid, 
we would just do a really really simple board games uh but no that's the first serious one yeah like i, I actually remember this i was talking about this before on on one of these conversations i had um and i remember like I, in in school making board games on on paper and then photocopying the paper to give my friends the board games and yeah so this was all all stuff like that uh, yeah and exactly. then and then what then what you got into like euro gaming like later in life or yeah a bit later um definitely some some of my my favorite games now are for example power grid uh, which mm. kind of to some degree it is inspired connecting flights just because of you know there is this strong kind of engine building element but also the kind of linking up places on the on the map yeah. um so and also auctions as well so yeah so i mean like for, first things first like um this this Kickstarter has has already started. A lot of the time we do these um, before the Kickstarter launches, uh, but but just due to our schedules clashing, we weren't able to get this going a week or two ago. Um, so the the campaign is is already live, and you, you you've already made the funding, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, triple the funding actually. That's, so fanta- that's really, fantastic. Really hopefully, fixed, hopefully yeah. it goes even further because that's the that that's the thing as well. That, um, Sometimes when I put these videos out, people don't have something to go and look at. So I highly recommend yeah. everyone goes and checks out the the Kickstarter. You can watch the the trailer um, that Raphael has made for it. That'll be in the description below. Um, but the, the the thing that I thought about when with connecting flights, when you first got in touch with me, you're like, oh, it's, it's a game about about airline travel, airline management, um, and and my head instantly went to also oh, so it's is, is it just ticket to ride but with planes? Um, but it's it's like you're saying that there's there's the engine building element and things. So what what makes this game, like you said right at the beginning of this, you said it's it's kind of above average. But what do you think sets sets this apart from games like Ticket to Ride? And what 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 makes what's the unique selling point on connecting flights? I think the the unique selling point is really the the mechanic I created to to basically make those flights uh, because um, unlike most network or route building games. The, mm-hmm you create those routes uh, using your own kind kind of a set of cards or you could almost be considered your own tableau yeah, yeah. because um, you basically you, you basically purchase airport cards plane cards passenger cards and then you kind of string them all together in, in like long chains uh, and that kind of um, it's it's really unlike other route building games where you basically create your routes on the map yeah, yeah. Whereas, whereas here you kind of you, you have your own set of cards and you can Rearrange those as much as you want. Uh, you can play with them, uh, and it really gives you a lot of freedom uh, to to create uh, a number of different connections. Because if you think about it, when you look at the, for example, ticket to ride map, you can, for example, go from, say, I don't know, London to Amsterdam, I guess, but you mm-hmm. can't really go from London to, uh, say, Copenhagen directly because yeah, yeah. there is no link. But with with air, with planes, you you could do that. And so I'm kind of by. By removing the the element of building the routes on the map, uh, I'm kind of just allowing players to build routes between any two places that are in the game. So, mm-hmm. so that's really uh, uh, that's that also adds a bit of complexity because you just have so many more options to build your connections, sure, and then yeah. and then that kind of uh, that that almost turns into a bit of a puzzle and a brain teaser because. There's just so many options that you have. It's like it, it really takes mm. quite a lot of time to work out what's the best way to you know connect your cities. So can can you connect any two cities? So for example, if I wanted to do London to Sydney, is that is that possible? Because it wouldn't be possible in reality, right? Because of like fuel and things like that, you would need to. Yeah, yeah. In the game, is possible, but you do, you do get penalized for that. So you'd be paying a lot of uh, a lot of money for fuel for that flight. Fair enough. So the the thing that uh, the the thing that really jumps to my head, and I actually asked you this on our first phone call, was um, what what was it about airline travel? Because it doesn't it doesn't sound like the most interesting thing to want for you to dedicate yeah. hours of your life to designing. You know, I, we talk to people who have made like fantasy games and people who have done things based on folklore. Yeah. Airline seems really dry. What was it that drew you to wanting to do an airlines board game? Yeah, so a couple of things. First of all. Um, I, I just don't like it how there's so so many different train games. But airlines, <laughs> it's just kind of like you know similar problem. But why why don't we see so many airline games? So that was one reason. Second is um, I actually did um, 
aeronautical, aeronautical engineering uh, as, oh, my, okay. as, as a degree. So the, I just like planes since, <laughs> since I was little uh, and also travel as well. So that was definitely an inspiration. And then I also did, uh, did some research later in life uh, on solving uh, like optimization problems so logistical right, okay. puzzles and things like that yeah, and yeah, i created yeah. some some models to to solve those and that kind of exposed me to these uh, these problems that i thought were interesting but i didn't really see those problems in board games so i thought if i could create a game that would uh, that would uh, and kind of like gamify gamify those problems and yeah. kind of convert them into a game i, th I thought that would be a co cool idea I mean, it definitely is a really cool idea, because it's like you're saying, when I first looked at the board for connecting flights, the fact there was, was no connections, like, yeah, it was confusing, and then when I realised what was happening, it suddenly became quite overwhelming at first, I'm like, because like you said, there's so many combinations, um, so, like, the, the other cool thing I noticed about this game is that you can play it um, competitively or cooperatively. Which which yeah. ca which came first? The first uh, was uh, competitive, so that's like your pretty much, like I said, very similar in some in some ways to Power Grid with like mm -hmm. the options. Yeah. You buy the cards with the auctions, then the the cards are basically your engine, and then you build it up over time, and then whoever has the best engine at the end of the game wins. So that was the kind of my my main thinking. But then I do realize that you know looking at Kickstarter and the and and the card the consumer behavior especially with the pandemic people just want like solo games and obviously right, okay. it's so like uh, these kind of games with auctions uh, and engine building they don't really work that well solo mm -hmm. so i just kind of uh, just created this this whole different game which okay it still uses the the core mechanic which is the the root building and how you create flights is exactly the same mm -hmm. but the, the the aim of the game now is different you're not really trying to uh, make the most profitable airline but what you're trying to do is there is uh, like passengers uh, uh, appearing on the board in different airports at every round and you're just trying to take all of them home by the end of the game and so if you manage to do that then you win but if if you kind of fail and there are still some passengers stranded in some airports then you lose so it can be so it can be played single player as well it's got the solitaire mode and and that and that is cooperative too. So then you can have two, three players working together to solve the co the single player version as well. Yeah, that's correct. That, that's amazing because like that that sounds like like you're saying it's a totally different game. You that would you'd normally find that stuff packaged as like an expansion or some or like the an add on or that that's awesome that that's included in like the the original box. Yeah, I thought I thought it was there was just as a first time creator, I just wanted to hit the market with the strongest possible product, so that's why I decided to just put everything in one box. Yeah, and like that that's the that's the thing as well. Like it, it is such a strong first outing. Like from from what I've been seeing, the, the the cards, the art on them is all fantastic. Do you do that yourself, or have you outsourced all of that? No, I I outsourced that. I worked with actually a team from five different continents. Uh, or hired like <laughs> Jeez, people yeah. from from different places to do the. The graphics, the art, the the video. So yeah, no, that that's amazing. Like, cause it does it does look super strong. Like the meeples all look great. The little um, airport terminals you've got, like the 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 card art is amazing. The board looks fantastic. Cause it's like like I said, that was the first thing I thought of. It's it's got it looks ticket to ridey in the way you've got the world map. You've got the score tracker going round. So it's it's um it's familiar. You're not you're not throwing too too much challenging things at the people straight walking in the door and then and then yeah then you've got your own awesome like um engine inside it um so what, what's what's it been like as far as the campaign goes because this is quite interesting because i don't normally get to talk about this because people normally come and do one of these conversations before the campaign starts so what yeah. what has it been like the first the first week or two you've already hit triple um, your goal so have you have people been getting in contact with you have you been receiving a lot of kind words like have you just been stressed completely like trying to keep up with it all yeah i mean a bit of everything lots of uh, lots of like you say comments lots of inquiries uh, questions for example about different language versions uh, mm. questions about uh, you know will will your box insert accommodate sleeves and things like that all sorts of everything you can imagine have been asked are these things you um, thought about like has has anybody said something you've been like oh my god like i i never considered that um 
most things I I I, I did consider. It's it's just like uh, especially also. Well, I haven't considered this uh, that the game is also attracted some attention from like uh, retailer retailers and just trying to come up with like a, an offer for them. Yeah. Uh, they all expect discounts, obviously. Uh, so yeah. just trying to do something coherent, that's always a challenge. Just, and working out like the, the shipping costs, whether it's going to be <laughs> cheaper if you ship by, by bulk or not. It's yeah. so much work. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, I mean, you've mentioned it now. Do, do you have plans for alternate language versions? Um, well, I, I wouldn't be doing those myself. So if I can partner with a publisher from another country that would help me with that, then definitely... But uh, as it stands, uh, I don't have anything lined up. Lined up. Fair enough. But yeah, cool. So, do you can you tell people a little bit about the the Kickstarter and how they can support you and the, the different tiers of of pledges and and what they can do if they want to get involved in connecting flights? Yeah. So I guess first thing. Uh, is, is that to mention that the Kickstarter is just really a pre-order page, so the product is not ready yet. So mm -hmm. we are hoping to have it manufactured by January next year. Uh, and in terms of the pledges, is the, the simplest one is just a, a, a one pound pledge that you can just uh, pledge one pound and you will just basically uh, almost like bookmark your place. If you want to buy, buy the game down the line in the pledge manager later, you can do that. Uh, then for thirty-five pounds, it's just a standard retail edition of the game. Uh, uh, that, that's there's plus uh, there's, the shipping is separate, so that's plus uh, nine yeah. nine pounds, so forty-four in total. Uh, and then, which is amazing then, in itself, because like you you don't really get board games for thirty-five pounds. Um, and like we said, this is not only like a, a really cool innovative game; it's also the co-op game as well so it's, it's like you're getting the expansion which again like i'm saying most kickstarters will say like pledge for the yeah. base game plus for the expansion so that's awesome that you get the two different games for 35 so sorry that you go on your, your next pledge go yeah yeah and the next one is actually the most popular just because i think the the audience at kickstarter they just love the the sort of deluxe upgraded versions so mm -hmm. that one is uh, 45 pounds and it, it consists of there is some extra um, cards like for example extra events uh, an extra player card so that's like a, an extra asymmetric player ability that you can have um, and then there is also some component upgrades so for example uv spot printing on the board and the, the box okay. and just like a, also the the insert is upgraded from a cardboard to a plastic uh, molded plastic insert and yeah just a couple of little upgrades like that fantastic and and i was yeah obviously it's, it's going really well and, and it's hard to it's, it's easy to see why like um like you've talked about the the actual like i said the, i think the components are great you're talking about this innovative system it's it's nuts and bolts euro gaming so it's just got such a wide appeal and and the price point is just just awesome like as someone who who deals in buying and selling board games like that, that that is that is a great price for a board game. Uh, whenever I can reduce something down to that price, I feel like an absolute hero. So the fact that that's just the price out the door um, is fantastic. Yeah, but obviously I want I want to give a little bit of discount to the Kickstarter backers because if yeah. it wasn't for them, and the game wouldn't happen. So probably you know when it comes to retail, it might be a little a little more expensive. Yeah. So when when does the Kickstarter end? Uh, what's the date? Just so that anyone watching this um, in the future knows exactly when what their cut off date is to get involved. It ends on the thirteenth of May. Cool. So yeah, so a little a little over two weeks from right now. So hopefully I can hopefully by the time I get this video up, um, people will still have have two weeks to. To go out and buy it, yeah. so the the thirteenth. Yeah. Awesome, um, but yeah, I I think this looks great, and like like I was saying, I, I love having people out to talk about. It. I love just the, the people's passion about these things, like um, really getting into the, the nitty gritty of why. Um, so it's awesome to hear that you're an aeronautics guy who loves these logic problems, and you're just applying like things you have interest in, and being like, what what how can I how can I make this accessible? How can I get other people as excited about planes and logic problems as you are um which, which is great which is great uh, and especially especially since um you're based in scotland um always want to support um local local creators um 
what are your what are your plans then for rolling this out? Because obviously with with the pandemic right now, it's quite hard because you can't really go to to like a trade show. You can't go you can't go and demonstrate it to people. Um, has has that changed your plans for this? Yeah, it's it's challenging, I guess. Um, I think I'll just uh, maybe focus on just working with uh, retailers and distributors and kind of get the game out uh, to cu- cu- customers this way. Yep. Like you say, I, I don't really want to, you know, put too many eggs in the basket of of uh, of these kind of uh, uh, like big big conferences like Essen and you know yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. UK Expo because you never know if they might get cancelled so that's always a risk yeah no exactly exactly um because that's the thing as well i used to love having having creators like yourself we had we had a bunch of scottish and english creators in into the store but again that's that's just not not possible where things are right now um but it's encouraging to see that people like like yourself are are still persevering are still going to know what we're we're going to push this out we're going to find alternate ways um and, and and that's been the great thing about the pandemic just seeing how how people adapt and still just push out the things they're passionate about yeah even with like playtesting we had to adapt because you know the, the the early the early iterations of the game i would just be able to jump jump into like a board game cafe and just mm-hmm. kind of play test with random people or friends and and family but since since the pandemic i had to move all the playtesting online so the game is actually available on a, a software called tabletop simulator oh, okay and, and because of that i've been able to get in touch with people from around the world so i've tested the game with people from like asia and the us and it's it's been really a great tool that helped me really make the game much better so, so is the game fully accessible on tts right now um it is yes except obviously tts uh, it's a paid software uh, yeah, yeah. so you'd have to buy it off steam but also we have we we had um, tabletopia reach out to us and they are willing to uh, to put our game on tabletopia uh, as well so that's, that's the amazing. benefit of that is that it's free so you don't have to it can be played in the browser mm-hmm. uh, so so hoping that that will happen soon yeah i mean i know that a lot of people during the pandemic have switched over to doing tabletop simulator like people have been playing warhammer on tabletop simulator yeah. um a bunch of other board games people have been modding to get onto tabletop simulator um and so so they can just if they own tabletop simulator they can play um connecting flights for free Yep, they can. Well, there you go. I mean, if, if if anybody wants to give it a go, if you enjoy it, you can um, throw Raphael one pound, five pounds, just saying, "Awesome game, bud." I don't, I don't need the physical, but yeah, like there you go. Yep. So anyone listening right now can can go straight onto your tabletop simulator and and try it out. Uh, that that sounds awesome, actually. I think, I think, I think I might do that. That that sounds like a good way for me to spend the weekend, just getting some friends and get in about this game. I I didn't know it was on tabletop simulator or. Or I would have actually sat down and played it before this interview. That's awesome. Um, yeah. But no, uh, but Raphael, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I hope, I hope people can see the enthusiasm I've getting now. Now that I can, I know that I can play it. I'm not going to have to wait until when, when. What's your, what's your expected time to ship? Did you tell me January, February, 2022? Yeah, probably January. January of next year, yeah. So I mean, if people want to back it, you can, you can get this uh, January 2022. Uh, the Kickstarter details will all be in the link below. But yeah, you you can start playing now. I think that's amazing that I can just go to tabletop and play right now. Um, but yeah, uh, if if you want to back Raphael in his Kickstarter, like I said, all the information is below. Um, do you have other? Do you have other communities? Do you have like a Facebook group and a Discord, and people can keep up with you? Um, yeah, we we have a, a Facebook page uh, and a Discord ch- uh, server. So yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll if you fire me all those links, I'll make sure that all gets in there below as well. Um, good, thanks. But but yeah, um, thank you very much for your time. I love shining a spotlight on on people who are passionate about gaming, people who are ma- making their dreams a reality. Um, I, I can't get over. I can't get over. I can play this right now. Uh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna text my friends and try and get on this t- like this weekend. Uh, that sounds awesome. Uh, but yeah, thank thank you so much for your time. Uh, and and yeah, anyone who wants to support Raphael, anyone who thinks this sounds like their bag, uh, definitely get behind connecting flights. I, I'm super excited about this game. Um, and I'm so I'm so happy that it's it's already hit his target. You know, like a lot of the time I do these, and I'm saying, folk, get in there, help Raphael make his dreams reality. But you've you've already got enough supporters who have made it reality. So now everyone else getting behind is just going to hit those stretch goals and yep. and make it even bigger and better. No, that's fantastic. Again, thank you so much for your time. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone for watching. I'll I'll catch you for another over the counter conversation. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries.